It's an interesting time for street photography with the Jubilee coming up. There's lots of interesting things to photograph. So let's talk about it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and, every, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, we're going to talk about street photography. And we're going to run through three tips to take better street photos. Now, there's lots of things that you can do with street photography. It's a really interesting genre, and it's different to a lot of other genres of photography because you're definitely capturing moments, you know, which is akin to things like wildlife or events or sports. But it can also kind of be like a portrait. You know, it can almost be a little bit of a cityscape, but with people in it. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Let's get into it. Tip number one is going to be all about picking and deciding on a subject. Now you want to find your subject within the crowd. Obviously a lot of street photography, sometimes people will just sort of snap away, just use their camera snap, get up in people's faces. I tend to approach it slightly differently. Now the main reason for that is that I don't like getting up in people's faces. You know, it's never super fun when people obviously are very uncomfortable. I don't like taking people's pictures when I can see they obviously don't want me to. I like to use a slightly longer lens. So something like a 7200 we've talked about in the past is a great option for me because I love being able to pick someone out in a crowd or pick out a moment from a little bit further away. And obviously then with a 7200, you can use that lens compression to really kind of isolate that situation, that subject. A 135 millimeter F1.8, which I've been using recently, a Samyang lens, which is great, is a great option as well. Even an 85 mil or a 50 mil. I love all of those kinds of options because I can isolate the subject. Now I love to find the subject in the crowd, to find that moment and then take that photo thinking about how I want to use the depth of field, how I want to use the framing, stuff like that, which we'll come on to in a minute, to actually isolate the subject and really define them in the frame. Now, that's not always the best way to do it. You might want more of a contextual shot, which means you might want to use a deeper depth of field, stop down that aperture, maybe use a wider lens to get more of the surroundings. This shot, for example, I was very, very pleased with because I liked the couple walking away. I liked the kind of jubilee feel as well, which is nice with the jacket, but I wanted more of that street around them. I wanted a more contextual shot. So I stopped down the aperture a little bit and I just shot much wider than I would normally have gone for to get that shot. Thinking about who your subject is is really important and whether or not you want to be isolating them, using depth of field, using light, whatever it might be, or whether or not you want a more contextual environmental portrait is a great way of identifying the shot rather than just sort of spray. Now don't, don't get me wrong, I've been there, I've sprayed, I've got all those shots, gone through 500 shots later, picked out three that I like. Don't get me wrong, that's definitely one way of doing it, but I love this other way of kind of identifying a subject in the street. And that brings me on nicely to tip number two, which is all about framing. Now, I love using this in almost every type of photography that I do. How can I frame the subject? Once I've identified the subject in the frame, how can I actually frame them literally within the frame at the photo. I feel like it's a frame there about 1,000 times. So for example, I might use plants, I might use light, I might use a shop front, I might use a bus to frame my subject, to actually get something to draw you in through the photo, give you interesting visual elements in the foreground, in the background, to actually encompass the subject within that frame. So here, for example, I'm using the plants in the foreground and the shop from behind to really frame my subject. Here, I'm using a bus that was whizzing past, shooting through that. I had to, had to try that a few times, manual focus, all kinds of stuff, to shoot through the bus to get my subject behind going through those windows. You know, you might use light, you might use anything else in the foreground to just sort of frame up your subject. It's a wonderful way of, of drawing the viewer into the photo and of really putting a bit more thought into that end result. Even a shop from behind can look fantastic. You know, light and dark can be a great way of framing up a subject, but it really adds more visual interest, an easy way to draw your viewer's eye to the subject and just a great overall end result. And that brings me on so nicely to the third tip, which is all about Think about the story you're trying to tell. Now, that's not literally a storybook, you know, what's the tale here? It's more about the vibe, the feel of the photo. What is the feeling you want to convey with the photo? And that will determine ultimately whether you want to isolate your subject, whether you want more environmental contextual stuff around your subject, how you want to frame them up, whether you want to use light, whether you want to use a foreground element, 
what's the feel here? So in this photo, for example, it's all about kind of the actual instrument and the musician playing in the street. So I didn't want to frame him with stuff in the foreground because the idea is he's playing out to everyone. So it's a, a nice sort of wide open shot like that. But he is slightly isolated with depth of field and stuff like that because I want him to be the absolute subject of the photo. Here we've got someone kind of working in the market. I'm framing them within their stall. It's in black and white because I want the vibe to feel kind of a little bit moody, a little bit, you know, a little bit lonely. They're just working away while everyone, the bustles kind of moving around them. It just comes down to that overall end feeling you want to evoke from the viewer when they actually look at your photograph. Now, if you can think about that, as I said before, it will inform every other choice you need to make. How to frame your subject, how to pick a subject, the lighting, all that kind of stuff. You're gonna be able to do that by actually coming from what is the feeling or the story behind this photo. And there we go, a bit of a quick one this week, three quick tips to get better street photos. I. I have a love-hate relationship with street photography because I go out, I do it, I like using these longer lenses, but I, I always, you know, I'm always unsure of myself. Do I want to do street photography? But I end up with a couple of good shots that I like, and it's always worthwhile at the end. It's a different type of photography, and something that I think is really important is pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone to do different types of photography because you'll become a better photographer at the types you like as well. You know, portrait photography might inform street photography in this situation, or cityscape photography might inform street photography, and then street photography might inform other types. And I think it's it's a really useful kind of exercise as a photographer to try these other genres that maybe you're less comfortable with to become a better overall photographer. So I guess that's kind of a bonus tip. There we go. I didn't expect it. I just started saying it. And there we go. Now, of course, there's a full list of all the kit used down in the description for all these photos. So we've got things like the new Fujifilm X-H2S, which I used for a lot of these shots. We've got things like the new Samyang 135mm f1.8, which is a lovely, lovely lens for portrait, but I used it a bit for street as well. Loads of stuff down there, so absolutely go and check all of that stuff out in the description. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, because there's new content all the time. I'll be seeing you in the next video, but until then, as always, Thanks for watching. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Well, well, well. What an unexpected turn of events. This week we're talking about street photography, but of course, this week we're going to talk about street photography. We're going to talk about three tips to increase. No, this isn't going to work. Thought I could power through it. I can't. You're going to have to. You're going to have to go away. Your, she, tell you what she is, is a very good portrait model when I need to test out a portrait lens. No fuss, you know, always keen, strikes a pose.